This Rodeo Remembers, powered by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. The sport of bull riding can be traced back to the haciendas of the 16th century in colonial Mexico. Ranch hands from different haciendas would put their skills to the test and these competitions were called chariadas. By the mid 1800s, chariadas had become popular throughout the Southwest, especially in Texas. One event was a form of bullfighting called jaripeo, where a rider rode the bull until it died. Considered cruel in the States by the late 1800s, this competition was replaced with steer riding, which had become popular in Wild West shows at the time. Then, in 1935, a Mississippi rodeo replaced the more manageable steers with bulls. That's when bull riding left the gate and became the popular sport we know today. Super Bowl Sunday is almost here between the Chiefs and Eagles. Kickoff is scheduled for Sunday at 5.30 p.m. And Philly is favored by one and a half points. So far now, that means either team has a strong chance to win. And while Super Bowl parties are always fun, the game day experience is not always fun in games. No, scammers right now are on the loose and experts are warning that you need a game plan. This year, tickets for Super Bowl 57 are mobile only. And there are only three ways to buy them from the NFL. You can get them through StubHub, SeatGeek, and Ticketmaster. Experts say to be very careful on relying on search engines when finding possible tickets because some scammers are upping their advertising strategy in order to get more clicks. Still ahead at 12.30, a train derailment on Friday night still causing problems for people in Ohio Why they're telling the public to avoid the area even three days after this horrible crash. Looking outside with live cam a minute ago, we were able to see some blue skies. No, not so much. It seems like we're kind of on in a transitional period, maybe. Yeah, we're kind of right on the cusp there of seeing more sun. It's, it's going to be mostly cloudy for a while longer. It, we got some video in on our KSA Connect that shows uh, the cattle drive on Saturday. Ursula, tell me, is this you? Yes, that is her. Here on the... Uh, I'm in the brown jacket on the right. Let's see if we can get the... There we go. And there I am at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Black Properly hat. dressed for the, the weather, right? It was a little chilly to start, but nice by the well, end. Well, when you're under that overpass, it's yeah. like a wind tunnel. So it's like <laughs> sure. the coldest part of the city. Sure. But as soon yeah, as we got time. out of there, everybody took their coats off. Oh, absolutely. When the sun came out. Hey, you had a good time, though, right? I did. I need to send you more pictures, though. Yes. I, I got to ride a horse and everything. Ooh. Send them in. We'd love to see them. Uh, thank you very much for submitting that photo to our case at Connect. It was fun out there on Saturday. Uh, let me show you the temperatures here across the state right now. We're starting to see things warm up. 68 degrees here in San Antonio, 73 Houston, 68 Waco, even 71 in Lubbock. So it's a warm day across the Lone Star State. We're getting warmth and moisture spreading north and uh, really it's kind of eroding some of that really cold stuff up here to the north. 33 in Minneapolis, so they're above freezing. 47 Omaha. In fact, the whole southeastern portion of the country still seeing some pretty warm weather. Pollen count, if you missed it earlier, mountain cedars in the minor category, it's at 250, molds are low, ash is low. Not a big deal, but mountain cedar does not want to give up. We're coming in and uh, coming closer to the official end of mountain cedar season, which is Valentine's Day. Hopefully things start to quiet down soon. Here's a case of 12 hour forecast. We think 74 is our high temperature by four o'clock. A few clouds out there, 7 p.m., 70 degrees should be a nice evening, but clouds will return overnight. We'll start to see some drizzle and fog developing for tomorrow morning. So Tuesday morning commute could be a little messier. We'll talk more about that and just how good our rain chances are next couple days here in just a few minutes. Thanks, Justin. Right now at noon, an urgent call from officials to immediately evacuate an area in Ohio near a massive train derailment. It happened on Friday night. However, officials right now are warning of a potential major explosion. ABC's Rena Roy is there at the latest. An urgent evacuation order now underway in East Palestine, Ohio, after a disastrous train derailment. Officials warning of a potential major explosion. The Grammys were interrupted by the news to, like, leave now. You know, so, I mean, it was immediate. The small town is located 50 miles northwest of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Schools and offices also shut down in the area today. Janet Meek's home is within the evacuation zone. She's now staying at a hotel 20 miles away. It's scary to, to not know, 
you know, how much damage could be done to our home and, and when we can go back. Multiple explosions have already caused massive fires since the derailment Friday night, sending toxins into the air. Federal investigators saying 10 of the 50 derailed cars were carrying hazardous material, including vinyl chloride. Short-term exposure to the chemical can irritate the eyes, nose, throat, and lungs. Long-term can lead to chronic liver and kidney problems. Authorities warn the explosion of a rail car could also launch deadly shrapnel up to a mile. NTSB investigators are on scene piecing together what caused the derailment. We obtained two videos which show preliminary indications indications of mechanical issues on one of the rail car axles. EPA crews are testing the air and water regularly. Although the water is discolored, they say it's safe to drink. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Still to come at noon, we are sitting down with UTSA quarterback Frank Harris. It's an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview. You don't want to miss what he had to say about football and food. And after the break, a history-making night at the Grammys. We've got all the sights and sounds from Hollywood in just moments. Welcome back. History was made at last night's Grammy Awards. From a queen who broke the record for all-time Grammy wins to a newly minted one, here's ABC's Will Gans with the highlights. Welcome to the Grammy Awards, where Queen B reigns supreme. I'm trying not to be too emotional. And I'm trying to just receive this night. On the night when she broke the record as the most awarded individual in Grammy's history, she almost didn't make it there at all. The downside of hosting the Grammys in L.A. is the traffic. Beyonce is on her way. Beyonce missing her first win of the night, stuck in traffic. And the queen is officially in the building. Ladies and gentlemen, Beyonce Knowles. Lizzo winning record of the year. Beyonce, whoo! In the fifth grade, I skipped school to see you perform. <laughs> My sister, she got me out of school. It was literature. I'm good. At music's biggest night. As you are, you know you the biggest musicians on the planet gathering to say. Hi. In English and Espanol. Yeah, Buenas noches, Grammy. And sing a little bit, too. From Bad Bunny's epic opener. Stevie, Smokey, and Chris Stapleton. Lovers, keep on to an all-star tribute to hip-hop. <laughs> History made more than once at the 65th Grammy Awards. Sam graciously wanted me to accept this award because I'm the first uh, transgender woman to win this award. And history repeating itself. Oh, God, Rich, he, he said, don't cry. If you win anything tonight, don't cry. And here I am crying. Just Album of the year going not to Beyonce, nor to Lizzo. Harry Styles! And thanks to a win for best audiobook, Viola Davis officially joins the exclusive EGOT Club, having won an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award, and so deserved. Will Gans, ABC News, New York. That's my Harry. All right. Elsewhere in Hollywood, it took nearly two months, but a movie finally topped the Avatar sequel at the box office. In fact, two movies did. Knock at the Cabin is the first new number one movie since mid-December. The thriller made $14.2 million to open in its in first place. 80 for Brady debuted in second place, beginning its box office run with $12.5 million. Avatar The Way of Water fell from first to third and $10.8 million. And Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, fell to fourth place with ticket sales of $8 million. And Justin, you were having a good time watching the Grammys yesterday. Uh, apparently, he's <laughs> shaking a leg there. Some good stuff going on. You got some moves. <laughs> no, I don't. I yeah, don't. you do. No, I absolutely do not. Um, no.
I try, but I don't. Uh, 68 degrees so far today. 57 was low this morning. The averages are 66 and 43, so we're above average in both regards. It's going to be a warm, humid afternoon. Records are 83 and 21. 83 is not in jeopardy, but we will get into the mid-70s. We've got some showers and maybe a few thunderstorms on the way. We'll look at the forecast coming up. Welcome back. Rodeo oh. season is here. Yeah, okay, so we did pretty good for the cattle drive. Good weather. Now we have the opening of the rodeo. I believe the carnival and all of that opens up on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And then we have the rodeo special on Thursday night. And we're going to be able to see the first night of the rodeo live here on KSAT 12. That's so awesome. So fun. And we have a special after that where we're going to interview all the winners and show you some kind of fun and crazy stuff. That'll be good times. We'll be outside, Justin. Hint, hint, hint. Hey, we're doing the best <laughs> we can, all right? Uh, you know, in fact, I was just writing a story about the love-hate relationship with the weather yeah, in the rodeo. It's so true. Uh, I look back at history at some of the dates with some of the worst weather, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably have that uh, on our site tomorrow. But yeah, this year, I think, is going to rank as one of the better years when it comes to weather, at least to start. Hopefully, it continues that way. Before we jump into the forecast, I wanted to get you updated on that earthquake in Turkey. Uh, we were getting word of it last night that this was a big, big earthquake. And let me show you exactly where it is. Uh, magnitude 7.8, okay, that's huge. That's going to do a ton of damage. This is central and southern Turkey near the Syrian border. It was at a depth of about 14.9 uh, miles. And unfortunately, we're hearing reports now of over 2,500 deaths. Just awful. This was a massive, massive earthquake. Uh, a lot of historical structures were being told have been destroyed as well. And the damage extends down into Syria, places like Aleppo, uh, is taking on some damage. So this was a big time earthquake. And uh, thoughts and prayers obviously go out to those folks who are going to be doing a lot of cleanup here. Uh, and still some aftershocks going, uh, even now. Uh, with probably a few more on the way. So we'll keep uh, keep tabs on that. Not a good situation there. Meantime, as we go outside for us, we've got mostly cloudy skies. Temperature is right now 68 degrees. Dew point is at 60. This number is rising. If you remember last half hour, we were talking it was 59. So it is rising with that south southeasterly wind gusting now to about 20 to 25 miles per hour. We're at 64 in Rock Springs, 68 in Del Rio, 74 in New Braunfels, 74 in Gonzales, 71 Pleasanton. These are areas that have seen a little bit more sun underneath the clouds, just a little cooler, but not by much. 65 again in Kerrville and around Bear County, we're closing in on 70. We should be there soon. It will be a warm afternoon. What about rain chances? Well, they start to kick in tomorrow. We won't see any today, but I think tomorrow morning some light stuff. And then by tomorrow night, maybe some heavier showers and storms uh, that leaks over into Wednesday. But that 30 percent you see there is mainly just in the morning. We'll have another chance coming up on Sunday, too. So some opportunities here to get some rain. And as we look at the satellite picture, clouds are breaking up. We'll see this trend continue into the afternoon. So a lot of us will see sun. These areas here will be the last to see it, but I think it will happen. And as we look at the bigger picture here, all this cloud cover, this, these low clouds are funneling north thanks to that added moisture that we were talking about. Here's what we're watching. Doesn't look like much, right? There's a little swirl right here over California. Really has not gotten its act together yet, but it will as it moves towards Arizona, starts to gain some strength, starts to tap into some moisture, and that's why we have rain chances coming up tomorrow. Uh, this afternoon, 5 o'clock, nothing there. It's quiet. But by the time we get into Tuesday morning, some drizzle beginning to take shape, uh, maybe some fog in spots, and then we'll see a few light showers into the afternoon. This is around 3 o'clock. We're adding in a 40% chance of rain. By Tuesday night, 10 o'clock, maybe some slightly heavier stuff, even a few rumbles of thunder. And with a frontal boundary that comes through San Antonio, probably our best shot at getting some more significant rain. That continues right on into very early Wednesday morning, 7 a.m. But after that, I think by Wednesday afternoon, we get some clearing. There is a risk for a couple strong storms. We need to mention this. Gusty winds will be the main threats, but they've extended it a little bit further west. It includes parts of San Antonio and off to the east where we could see maybe one or two strong storms. Something we'll be watching very closely on radar. Here's the extended forecast. 70 tomorrow, a lot of cloud cover, scattered light rain, and then our chance of storms Tuesday night into early on Wednesday. Sun pops out Wednesday afternoon. We get up to 72 on Thursday to start the rodeo. Looks beautiful. We will get a front though Thursday night that kicks up the winds. Does not bring any rain, but it cools us down. 59 Friday, 32 Saturday morning. So that will be chilly, but the weekend all in all looks okay. 60 Saturday, 64 for Super Bowl Sunday, guys. Awesome.
After the break, we got more to come. An exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with UTSA star quarterback Frank Harris. We're talking all things football, food, and his recent engagement up next. Welcome back. We're just hearing about the death toll nearing 2,500 in Turkey, Syria after a powerful quake. And we were just talking in there, here in the studio how significant this is with Justin Horn because we have had a lot of major earthquakes but done with this kind of death toll. Yeah, and as the numbers come in, I mean, it's, it's really sobering. Uh, we just showed you this, but we're going to go back to it. Uh, that uh, earthquake there in southern Turkey, magnitude 7.8. So this happened uh, 4 a.m. their time, but we were starting word of it here last night. And uh, there you see that now we have the main earthquake here somewhere in there, but you see all these red dots around it. So there have been numerous, numerous aftershocks, and that's just causing insult to injury. Some of the aftershocks have been pretty sizable, but a depth of 14.9 miles. And yes, unfortunately, there is a very high death toll with this and uh, they're still cleaning through the rubble there. Uh, just such a sad, sad situation. And uh, yeah, we've seen earthquakes maybe with this magnitude before, but this one has had a serious impact. And uh, that's, that's the latest. We wanted to touch on that one more time, and we're gonna go back to uh, you guys there for a little bit of sports. Thanks so much, Justin. We're going to keep an eye on that. Meantime, we usually don't see too much from star players in college football once the season is over. However, UTSA's starting quarterback, Frank Harris, has been active both on campus and in the community. Case Central Sports stopped by the UTSA campus recently to catch up with Harris for a one-on-one -on -one interview. He sit down with Larry Ramirez covering football, food, and his recent engagement. Her name is Taryn. She went to Antonian. She graduated in 2017. Um, she went to Kansas and played softball there. Uh, so I've been known her since high school. And then when she got done, uh, we hung out. And then it was just, you know, from there. And then uh, she's in PA school right now down south in the Valley. So she'll graduate in December. So okay. hopefully the wedding is sometime next year, the beginning of next year, maybe February or March. So, yeah, that's my girl. I love her. Very cool. So normally you take a knee you know, to run time out of the clock. You took a knee this time to extend the clock. <laughs> what was that like for you getting down on the knee, doing, I mean, you're nervous? All oh yeah, I was for sure nervous. I text Coach Davis, uh, the quarterback coach, like, Coach, I'm nervous. He was like, Frank, you, you know, you played in multiple games, but I told him, it's not like a game, this is different. Yeah. I'm more nervous than this than, than ever. He said, well, you know the answer that you're gonna get. You never know the outcome of a game. I'm like, you know what, you put it like that, you know you're all right. So uh, it was very, very nerve-wracking, nerve um, but it was a great outcome, you know. Mm -hmm. My family was there, her family was there, some of my friends there, her friends were there as well. Uh, we was in a back room, um, private room, and then uh, when she walked, first walked in, they just said, you know, will you marry me? And she had no idea. Okay. Uh, so she was very, you know, shocked, and I was just, it was just a great experience. So now the biggest question following that, is Rashad Wisdom gonna be part of your groomsmen group? Shaw, I think he'll be the flower boy. I think I might, he, he got the, he's a hike and a little kid as a flower boy, so I might have him throwing the flowers out. <laughs> what was that river parade like? Yeah, it was big. I, it was a lot of people that showed up. Uh, we definitely appreciated that. Uh, hopefully if we win it again this year, you know, we can have the same thing. Uh, it, was, it was a great experience to go out there, had a whole city come out there and support us. And uh, we definitely had a great time, like I said, bonding as well, getting on different boats. Did you feel like, you know, a member of the Spurs at all after seeing all their <laughs> celebrations over the years? I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, we, some notoriety that we get is, you know, is similar to the Spurs, which personally I don't really get because, you know, those are professionals, you know, we're still in college. Yeah. Uh, but it's just cool to just have uh, the love and support from San Antonio um, that, that they give us and it just definitely means a lot to us. How cool was it too to have the uh, the soccer team there? Yeah, it was cool because you know they won too. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to include the, those those uh, those young ladies, and uh, whoever wins, I think should, should get that rightfully so. Uh, I feel like they deserve it, and uh, it was great to have them. You know, Coach Pittman's doing a great job with the soccer team, and uh, I'm sure they'll do it again this year. What's your favorite meal? Your favorite food? My favorite meal would probably be a steak. Steak. But everybody gonna get mad at watching this interview. My first time having a steak was in high school, like my junior year. I didn't know what it was. I seen it was meat, so I put ketchup on it. <laughs> what? So now, every time I get a steak, I got good ketchup. You still put ketchup on it? It's nothing like it. You gotta try it. You're right, I've never tried it. I tried it. It's just meat. 
Uh, yeah. No. It's just me. Adam Fotog says no. Oh, I'm telling you, it's just me. Mark Fotog, what do you say? No. It's just me. It's just me. And it, it, you act like it's like a... It's salt pepper, that's why I did the steak. No, that's nasty. Have you taken a bite of steak without ketchup? I have. And what do you think? It's good, but I like, I like uh, ketchup. <laughs> Now, I have to imagine oh. Shad in particular and some of your teammates, they have to give you grief about that. Oh, my goodness, do they? They don't leave me alone about it. And Shad goes around telling everybody, you know, Frankie's ketchup with a steak. So we'd be in the training room, everybody just comes, you're nasty, you're nasty. I'm like, what happened? And Shad told him. I just, my first time, I'm just, I didn't know. My oh first time having a steak was, I looked like a pork chop when I first had it. I didn't know what it was. So. But you wouldn't even put I'm it on a pork chop. I'll put, put ketchup on a pork chop. It was good though, so now I just, uh, it's, it, it's, it's embarrassing to ask when I go to the steakhouse this for ketchup. <laughs> I was like, excuse me, can I get some ketchup? <laughs> I know they look at me funny, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, it'd be so embarrassing. What does your fiance think about that? So she don't, uh, she think it's weird too, but she kind of used to it now, I guess. But I get fries as well. Okay. I get steak and fries. So you kind of play it off a little bit. <laughs> you play it off. I can have using the ketchup for the fries. That's the best way to do it. <laughs> but the other day I went to a steakhouse. They gave me mac and cheese. <laughs> so there was no fries. Yeah, no <laughs> you should just order a side of fries on purpose. <laughs> so I had to get the ketchup out right. I was like, can I get some ketchup, please? It was bad. Has anybody tried it though? And they're like, no, dude, this is not good. I don't think anybody has tried it. Okay. They just assume it's nasty. I don't get it. I assume it's nasty, but you know, for you, I'm gonna try it. And watch, and yeah. just text whenever I'll, you figure it out. I'm like, gonna put a little bit on bad. a piece of steak and try it. Yeah, I'm and gonna watch. try it, no. All, everybody, okay. everybody watching this, steak with uh, ketchup, try it, let me know how it yeah. is.